to Modern Animism, a holistic spiritual path. I'm your host, Laura Giles. Thanks for tuning in. I was having a conversation the other day about what to do after the light comes on. So let me set the scene. Maybe this has happened to some of you. So we all start out in some areas of our lives not knowing that there's something to know. Maybe it's in the area of cooking, relationships, or ice hockey, okay, and then we get a clue. We don't know what it is or how to do it, but we're like, hey, there's something going on here. And then we figure it out. But it's a learning phase, and we have to think about it and practice it. Then finally, after a lot of practice, it starts coming naturally, like walking. So the viewer wanted to know, how do you get from that space of knowing that you don't know something to developing that into something? Specifically, you wanted to know about animism. How do you get from knowing the love of a sunrise, loving the energy of standing in a storm, or loving the gentle rhythm of the waves to expanding that to a connection to everything and everyone? It's like he knows that there's something there and it can be tapped into, but he doesn't know how. I'm going to give you my take in just a moment. You don't have to agree with me. It's just something to think about to help you form your animist practice and path. Well, let's pause to give gratitude to the ancestors and elements. I acknowledge and thank the element of earth for the food, home, stability, strong foundation beneath us and the community that sustains us. Thank you for the sensuality that surrounds our physical beings and makes living unique and worthwhile. I acknowledge and thank the element of air for inspiring us with ideas and taking our words to our ancestors. I acknowledge and thank the element of fire for giving us the sun to keep us warm, and that's waning as summer starts to wind down, and for giving us the power to create change that we balance with responsibility. I acknowledge the element of water and thank you for sustaining our lives and reminding us to go with the flow. I acknowledge and thank our loving, helping ancestors from the human, plants, animals, and mineral kingdoms. I thank you for all the help that we receive that is both seen and unseen. I thank our listeners uh, and thank you for helping us to continue to grow. We're really blessed with such fabulous supporters and I do appreciate all of you. And if our show inspires or helps, please consider donating to help sustain us. We're all volunteers here. Um, So you can help out at our website at pansociety.net or at buymeacoffee.com backslash pansociety. And if money is an issue, you can also help by liking, commenting, and sharing our posts on social media. This helps our stats so that we get better rankings in social media and can be more easily found and helps other people to know about what you care about and love too. So it helps us to grow. So if you benefit at all, I ask that you return that energy in some form and um, honor the spirit of reciprocity. Okay, so how do you move from being an unskilled animist or someone who resonates with the ideas of animism to somebody who has it in their bones? And to me, the answer is mindfulness. So how you do anything is how you do everything. Being present and alive starts with being here. I believe that animism is our natural state. It's who we are as children. And kids believe that cars and teddy bears are alive, that they can talk. They see life in everything until it's taught out of them. And mindfulness helps us to get back to that state. It's who we are naturally anyway. So we have to tap into that inner child and learn the way kids do with mindfulness, plus the wisdom of the elder, so through our life experience. So mindfulness is a blend of the left brain logical side It's air energy. It takes in data from the senses to what you see, hear, taste, touch, and smell while staying detached. And by that, I mean there's no judgment. It just is what it is. So if you know any airy people, you know what I'm talking about. So Libras, um, what are the air signs? Uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank here. But they're kind of Geminis. Um, They can be kind of detached and, and just cool, And that's air. So there's not a lot of emotion to what they're seeing, and and it can hmm, make some people um, uncomfortable, but it's actually exactly what we need right here. So to take in data and stay detached from it and be logical, be linear. Um, But then you add the female side, the emotional side of water, because we're not lopsided like that. We want to be balanced. And without water and emotion, life's bland. So What's the point? So that all that detachment is good, but we need to balance it out. So we want to consider that too. 
And the space where these two intersect, the masculine and feminine, the right brain and left brain, is wise mind. So it's the joining of the masculine and feminine. And can you see why that would work better? It's more holistic. And animism is holistic. So we could stop there, call it a day, and that would create a huge improvement in what we perceive but lots of people practice mindfulness and still don't get it. So I'm going to ask you to go a little bit deeper, okay? The left brain works by comparing and contrasting. It looks at the past to determine the meaning of the present and the future. So if a black dog was mean and nasty in the past, it'll often judge that it'll be the same in the present, even if there are no indications of that now. So in other words, the left brain lies. It distorts. Uh, it reinforces separation and helps us to stay in the antagonistic duality mindset, which is the idea of good and evil, in and out, black and white, that stuff, which we live in. Um, and that's not what animism is about. Animism is inclusive, but we're humans, and we need that left brain masculine energy to be whole. So what I'm going to suggest is that you go ahead and use that when you need to make log logical choices like balancing your checkbook or planning a move or a vacation, we need data. We need comparisons and to consider the things for the past for things like that. And this is also the me part of sovereignty, connection, and oneness, the masculine part. To so lean on the senses or the feminine part when you want to be more in that complementary duality space of connection and togetherness, you can't really learn that with techniques but by experience. So we don't say, step one, go out at desk. Step two, face the sun. Step three, watch it. Step four, create emotion. Let your heart swell and connect with the sun, the air, and the earth beneath you. If you don't know how to do that, instructions really don't help, do they? <laughs> so that's what the right brain is for. It's symbolic. And if you notice how I talk, I'll sometimes say things that don't really make I'll say a lot of things that don't make sense, but... <laughs> But in particular, what I'm talking about is um, the way that I might describe uh, things with the wrong adjective. So I'll say, like, a, a you is delicious. And delicious is a taste word, and we don't eat yous because they're poisonous. <laughs> so why am I saying that? It's because an animist life to me is fully sensory. So it's a form of synesthesia. And when you're connected to it all, everything is fully sensory. So animals, crystals, and ferns have tastes, smells, textures, colors, and sounds. Everything. And the vibration that flows within them is holistic. So only people separate things out. And the more you practice this and experience life in this way, the more it's going to happen automatically. So take a lemon or anything, for example, but we'll talk about a lemon right now, and look at it to really see it. And then smell it. Really smell it. And then taste it. Notice all the different tastes, not just the first one, or the one that you're used to. And we're so overstimulated all the time that we don't really get nuances anymore. So take your time with this and savor it. And listen to it. And if you're patient, you'll hear its sound, or maybe its voice. If you start saying things like, the lemon wants me to eat it. You're in your left brain. The right creative brain doesn't have language or nouns. It's just sensory. So keep it to the right brain to develop this way of knowing. The whole universe is speaking to you right now in its own language. And when you watch a sunset in this way, it becomes alive and authentic. And it's not tainted by your vision of it. It gets to be what it truly is. All the colors vibrate with their own frequency. And this whole thing together becomes a symphony. If you've ever um, seen, let's see, so the scene in um, Cocoon where uh, uh, when, the, when the young guy and girl are in the pool, or I don't know if it's a girl, an alien, whatever, and the girl sends out her spirit to him and they kind of have uh, cosmic sex, um, that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's it's more than just what you see here, taste, touch, smell. There's an energy to things. There's lots of movies that do this really well, and I can't think of them right now. That They kind of escape me, but there are scenes like this, and people do perceive it. It's a real thing if you let yourself experience it. I mean, I've 
had that happen like many, many times when I wasn't even trying, um, especially when the energy is really powerful or a person's energy is really powerful. But you can do it with anything. Now, so back to the lemon. If you start making meaning of your perceptions and say things like, the lemon loves me, that's probably a lie because you're taking it out of the realm of the senses and turning it into meaning or language, which is a distortion. You're humanizing the experience and putting it through your own lens when the lemon lens might not be anything like the human lens. So what I'm suggesting is that you enjoy the lemon for what it is. Um, a lot of times I'll have experiences, not even try to put it to words, because you just really can't, you know? It's, it's, when I had my um, sacred travel business before corona, wipes me out, <laughs> and everybody else, nobody's traveling still, um, it would just, that's just kind of how I would explain it to people. It's like you just had to be there, and I'm not even going to try because trying to put it into words is, is failing, basically. And the people who would go with me would be like, yeah, I get it. And then that's all we would say about it because there just are no words for those experiences. It transcends language. So you're humanizing it um, when you do that, and it's not really a human experience. It's more, I don't know if you could say it's a spiritual experience. It's something other than human experience. So enjoy the experience for what it is without trying to put it in a box or define it. And I promise you, it's as fulfilling as it can be just as it is. Because you can't really capture anything. It's all an illusion. And the more you try, the more you enchant yourself and forget that it's all an illusion. So you become a part of the illusion. And for my money, I want to be who I really am, not a shadow of who I am, not the illusion part, but the whole consciousness. See what I'm saying? So a lot of people think that you have to be in the country, near nature, to really be an animist. But it doesn't really matter if you're in the city in a high-rise with no green space around you at all, because everything's alive, and you can tap into it, just feel it all in a different way. And you can feel the connections of everyone on the subway or to the pages of a book or the noodles in your soup. It doesn't really matter. Once you put that right brain experience into words, though, remember you diminish it so it's not something that can really be given to you, taught, or even truly shared because you're the only one with your brain. I mean, unless you're some spectacular poet or artist, and then maybe you can approximate it and share it. Um, but that's what artwork is all about, really. Uh, it's something that has to be discovered for yourself. And even when you see a great work of art, I mean, unless it's like Michelangelo, and I think everybody gets that. But if you get something like a Van Gogh or a, a Picasso, what I can't say what these people are seeing, but I think what they're seeing is what I'm talking about. And then, you know, when it comes to your brain, well, you weren't there. You didn't see it. So, But you can kind of get a sense of it. Um, so what I'm saying is that it's not about the what. We tend to focus on things that we can see and prove, but it's not just about rituals. So animism is not just about that or the ancestor altar. Those things are important. It's what, they, what you can see. But there's so much more to that, you know. And, and if you just have that and not the foundation, you can still not get it. And I see people do that all the time, when they, especially with Native American um, spirituality because, it's, you know, we're in America. And that's the most popular thing. And I'll hear people tell me stories, and I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> They've just missed the whole point of whatever it is they're talking about because they don't have that. So I'm trying to help you get it, okay? Um, so it's about the how. And if you walk holistically, it'll give those rituals and ancestors, ancestor reverence, practices, whatever you're doing, um, meaning and power that they won't otherwise have. And everything you do will have more truth and meaning. So focus on that how. And that's part one, actually. It's about receiving authentic, holistic data from the world around you. And part two is what you do with it. And that's where the complementary duality part comes in. See how all these ideas we talk about in isolation actually work in a web with everything else? So many people tell me that, you know, your, your site is just so broad, I can't tell what it's about. And that's because it's all connected. And if you don't have all the little pieces and all the little spokes, then the, it's like having a, a thousand-piece puzzle and you just want the borders or the corners or the, the flower. And the, you know, you need the whole thing. It's not a piece of a puzzle. It's the whole thing. Um, so hopefully <laughs> you'll be able to take these pieces now and start making sense of them. Um, but I actually think that if you start seeing the world in this way, 
the what do I do with it part will come really easily. But since it's new to lots of people, I want to talk about it and break it down anyway. So we have this data. We see how things vibrate. We see the true essence of whatever it is we're looking at. And what you'll start to realize is that so much of what we get upset about isn't real. And nothing's really bad. It could be the wrong thing in the wrong place at the wrong time. It could be undesirable, but it's not wrong or bad. So, for example, lots of people are afraid of spiders and snakes. They're not bad. You probably just don't want them in your house. Um, I'm sure you have a favorite political candidate, right? And then there's the one that you love to hate, right? You probably don't want that person's policies dictating your life, but the person isn't bad, and those policies aren't bad. They may work in another time or place, but this is not the right time or place for them here and now. And I can see some of you right now saying, well, you know, some things are pretty, pretty black and white, and bad is sometimes bad. But let's look at history. We're living in a time now where statues are being taken down all over the place. Why? Well, why were they put up in the first place? So they were built to honor someone's contribution. And whoever we are looking at, they did something that worked well for someone. By today's standards, they don't look so hot. And that's what I mean. Things change based on culture, place, season, time of day, person to person, and so on. So you can see how changing your thinking can change the way that you feel about politics, politicians, and elections. It's more peaceful, isn't it? Maybe you still want to advocate, speak out, vote, do something, or do nothing. But it's a different feeling when we take the judgment out of it, isn't it? It's like we don't have to prove anything or win anymore. Everything is sacred, and that's the point. So let's look at another example. I know that some of us really like the summer, and it's warm. We can go outside and enjoy nature. Things are growing and are in abundance. But it's winter that allows that cycle to continue. Without winter, the land would have no rest. And this is another way of saying that everything has an opposite, and that opposite creates balance. It's necessary for life. So we can't have males without females. There's no words for things that don't have some sort of complement because everything is defined by something else. Cold is only cold in relation to another temperature. I just heard a story about someone who went to Scotland for Christmas. And she said it was the coldest she'd ever been. And the local guy who she said it to was actually uh, said it was a pretty balmy Christmas. So who was right? You know, was it warm or freezing cold? Well, it's relative. You know, place, culture, time, person, age, season, matters. So in other words, everything is what it is. That's it. Boom. Done. And it varies from lens to lens or person to person or creature to creature. So there are no absolutes. You know, lions think gazelles are pretty tasty. Caterpillars think leaves are tasty. So who's right? You know, my way of seeing a sunset isn't superior to yours. And my way may change in 10 years because we evolve. Today's not tomorrow, and yesterday's not today. So if you really want to be a modern animist, live in today. Experience what you're seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, and desiring today. Notice how every other creature is doing the same way in a way that makes them comfortable and happy. And give grace. We're all doing the best that we can. And tomorrow is going to be different. That left brain can really get us into trouble when we want to know everything intellectually and be able to prove everything. It can put us in a place where we start talking about right and wrong and good and bad. And what is that really? If you see something that needs to change, start with your lens. The world really is quite perfect. And if you want to live in relationship with it, start by not trying to change it or force your will on it. I'm not saying you can't have dreams or goals or make changes, positive changes. Lots of fabulous things happen because a person with a dream came along and the will to make it happen. So what I'm saying is take a step back and see how your will might impact everything before you share your vision with others. Think of the we. We so often see the me and we forget the we. So I guess what I'm saying is be holistic. We do a great job of the masculine side of the West in the yeah, sorry, the the masculine side of life in the West, <laughs> but not so well at the feminine side. And I once went to this holistic training. I probably mentioned this because this was a, like such, such a eye-opening moment for me. Um, but I went to this holistic training where it was all left brain instruction, and I was having a really hard time. And finally I got it. It clicked. 
And I realized that I was struggling because they took a right-brained idea as a native practice and distorted it beyond recognition so that they can understand it and replicate it. And it kind of worked, but I think going into the front feminine door would have been a lot easier. And if you think like an animus and used a whole brain approach, everybody could have done that. So that's kind of what I'm talking about with these distortions that happen if you're not doing animus things, holistic things, in a holistic way. So that's what I hope I'm giving you here, a whole brain way of seeing the world. Um, a lot of questions that I get come from not seeing in a whole brain way. So it's kind of like we have to, if you're not changing the way that you're thinking, you're really, no matter what I say, you're not really going to get it. Um, you got to get in your body more, have a sensual experience of the world, feel, pause, savor. Those are all feminine things. Forget about words, logic, and connecting the dots. And let things free float. Not saying that those aren't important. You can use those later. But in this moment, as you're trying to kind of get it, they're not going to help. So, again, I'm not knocking the left logic or details. I'm just saying that don't forget the forest for the trees. It's not either or. It's actually both. So to recap the whole point, if you want to go from having a clue about animism to really experiencing it and feeling it in your bones, you can't read it in a book, guys. That can help to flesh out some missing parts, put some things together. I certainly have learned things from books. Um, but it won't give you the full experience. And you can't just talk about it. It's not really about ideas. You can't take a class or do any of the things that we normally do when we want to learn something because animism is holistic. It's connected. It's experiential. So if you want to have it bone deep, you've got to learn to experience it, the world in that way. And when you do the rest will fall into place and all that intellectual stuff that you learned will make more sense. So all the stuff that you don't know will begin to fill in intuitively. And lots of it's archetypal because it's the first spiritual path. It's in our bones already, so we just have to return to our natural state to be with it. So it's really more a path of remembering than learning. I hope that was helpful. There's a lot of masculine ways of knowing in the Western world, and we're teaching ways to overcome that programming in the mentoring program at pansociety.org. I do apologize. It is slow going. Totally acknowledge that. We're all volunteers here, and we're committed to doing our weekly podcasts, blog posts, and YouTube videos. We have jobs and families, so the mentor site gets what's left of us after we do all that. Um, but there is a skeleton that you can learn from, and if you want more help, you can join that. If you want to support, you can always send us a donation. So there you have it, another perspective on spirituality. We support all views and want to give you ideas on how to shape your own practice. And so I hope this was helpful. And if you want to deepen um, your practice, you're free to join us on the, the free Facebook private group. Um, lots of people post there and just share their lives and questions and sometimes lots of humor over there. So we'd love your feedback and to hear from you and have you part of the clan. Um, I would like to close by sending gratitude to the elements and our loving, helping ancestors for being here. Thank all of you for joining us for this edition of Modern Animism Radio. Again, don't forget to donate as we do need your financial and emotional support. And thanks for tuning in. I'm Laura Giles for Pan Society Radio. See you next week.